All right, so I just wrapped up my trading day. It is July 17th, Friday, and it's about 12 p.m. Eastern time when I'm shooting this. Um, so today was not a very great day, to be honest. Yeah, wasn't too happy about it, but I just kind of remember that I'm learning and the losses and the wins don't really matter. It's like, whose line is it anyway? Because I'm really just trying to master my rules. So let me go ahead and jump into what happened today. So first, um, today was a loss of $55. As you can see, I traded Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Shopify, and the SPY. The SPY is an ETF for the S&P 500. So basically what happened was uh, these Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Shopify trades were just dip buys, just quick dips off their lows. Um, they worked out okay. 20 bucks on Amazon, loss of seven bucks on Apple. And then, I mean, those are just, I'm just kind of testing around with this little dip by strategy. Basically, once the stock comes down to below the lower band VWAP, then I buy it and see if I can just get a quick little pop dip by. It's a, it's a strategy that's working out so far. Uh, so I'm just kind of further testing around with it to see what's going to happen. Trading the SPY today was not so great. I lost $77 on that one, which is pretty frustrating. But before I jump into the technical analysis and what the charts are looking like, let me show you what my rules are in case you're curious. Okay, so here are my rules. It is uh, six rules and got something floating around, some dust, gross. Anyway, six rules right here. So I got to read these daily and follow them. So rule number one is to be patient. Be patient entering the trade and then be patient while in the trade and letting it work for me. And this is kind of a double-edged sword because when I'm patient on entering the trade, I may miss the trade completely and it may not come down far enough to support allowing me to buy and it may just kind of rip up. So this one is a tricky one. And then while in the trade, if I'm too patient, you know, I may be in profit and then I'm patient waiting for it to go higher and then it comes back down and stops me out. So struggling with the patient one. And then the next one is to have a stop loss before opening the trade. So this was one that I really messed up with a lot, a lot in the past. Uh, I just would buy just because I think it's going up and then I wouldn't really have like, oh, when do I exit? So I'm really trying to stick to this one. I've, so far, I've been pretty good with having a stop loss and sticking to that stop loss. No trend, no trade. This is one that I break a good amount. Follow the trend. The trend is your friend. So like if there's no clearly defined downtrend or uptrend, then I stay out. Okay. This one is tough. Um, here's a new rule that I recently started because I just, I don't want to complicate things. I want to keep it as simple as possible. Do not short, only go long. This is something that I feel like, like when I'm constantly, when I'm running on both sides of the market, going short and going long, I feel like it's just too much. And I'm trying to capitalize on both sides of the market. And I really just seem to be focusing on one side, which is just the long side because the government is on that side, mass majority of traders I feel like are long traders. So they're on that side and I just need to be looking at dip buys and not trying to short. So for sure, I'm just going to try and focus on, on this rule. Do not average down. This is one that has saved me in the past because I averaged down and then it came up and I was able to exit a, a trade for a profit, even though I was at a massive loss before. It's not a healthy thing to average down. It does save you sometimes, but I do not want to average down. As long as I stick to my stop loss, then I should not have to average down. And then don't take trades outside of the morning session between 9.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's really what I'm trying to just stick to. What's sucky about that, though, is that uh, not all moves happen within that time frame. So uh, it is a bit challenging. But um, let me go ahead now and jump over to the charts and see what thems are looking like. Okay, here's the one minute chart of the SPY. Here's the five minute chart. Here's the daily chart of the SPY. So pre-market, uh, it gapped up a little bit. As you can see, if I move that over, this was yesterday, gapped up a little bit and uh, was holding above this support at 321 for the longest time. I thought that we were actually going to hold that and then push up. As you can see, this candle right here had like a burst up and I thought we were going to get lift off and it did not. So I was buying into this, risking off of the support level. It ended up slowly failing just to grind down. And then so I'm thinking, OK, there's a lot of buyers in here. But really what it is, is it's a chop shop. It's all consolidation. Uh, this morning it was a lot of consolidation. It's just not going anywhere, just indecision. People don't know if the market should go down, if it should go up. So I shouldn't have been trading because my rule number four is no trend, no trade. And I did anyway, which was bad. I was losing money. Um, 
So it sucked. I did not go short on the market at all. So as it was coming down and as I was expecting it to put potentially come down even lower. I wasn't even thinking about going short because I'm trying to follow my rules. So I, I like it. I mean, it, it makes things a little bit more boring because I'm more sitting on the sidelines a little bit more uh, waiting for that dip by opportunity. I believe I did do a dip by here. The lower band VWAP, which is what this purple, these purple lines are, the lower band VWAP usually acts as support. So when, when it comes down to test it, sometimes it holds. Um, sometimes it also acts as resistance. So like right here, when it's below it, it will be a challenge to get back above it. So I really like the view of it really works well for me. So it, um, it came down below this support, tested it as resistance. It held as resistance, started to come down, but it was not going to break down and wash out to this lower 320 support area. Pushes back up, pushes through the resistance. I believe I may have gotten long in here. I honestly don't remember, but it was just choppy. I, I think I even bought this breakout. Once it held above support for a little bit, I bought this thinking that it would go back up. Didn't, failed, lost a couple bucks on that. Cause I'm trading small size right now. I mean, when I'm buying the SPY, it's like 50 shares. So I'm really just trying to be conservative, just trying to, you know, I play sports, so I'm just trying to swing the bat and just get my form and get my head right, follow my rules, and then I can start to take some bigger positions once I'm, you know, I was doing well for so long. Um, I was up about $10,000 at one point and then just started having a series of losses. Now I'm at around like 80, a little over $8,000 for the year in profits this year, which is, I don't know. It's not, it's not anything that I'm too excited about given how much time I've spent on this thing, but um, just trying to learn it because I feel like if I master this skill and I get really good at this skill, then I'll be able to do this for a long period of time. Anyway, and there's massive gains that you can potentially make if you just uh, get better at it, obviously. So anyway, the market started to do this downtrend. It started to finally fail, come down lower, come down lower. Um, so I thought this 320 support was going to hold a lot, but it sliced right through that thing. And I was like, I even dip bought this. I bought this right here thinking that it would hold the support. Didn't hold one bit, came all the way back down here, found support at this like random weird level uh, at 319. If I zoom out a little bit, I mean, I had my support marked down here at 319.30s. It found support here and just pushed all the way back up to test that as resistance and then came back down and then blew right through it. And I really, I really regret not dip buying it right here because this is like my strategy. Like when it comes outside lower than the lower band VWAP, that is a good buying opportunity. And I should have just bought and held some right here when it was below. I was buying Amazon. That, that's when I got in on Amazon was because Amazon was below the lower band VWAP. So I bought some of that and I should have just been buying the market as well. Well, it pushes up, does a little pullback and then pushes on up. And I was buying it in and out a little bit here and there, but um, yeah, ultimately it beat me. The market beat me and I have a loss of 55 bucks today, which is not going to kill me, but it's, uh, it's a little saddening to be honest, going into the weekend with a not so great week. Um, yeah, I'm red for this week for sure, which is pretty frustrating. Anyway, comes, pushes up to this uh, resistance up here at 321, comes back down, rides the middle VWAP level for a bit, fails, comes down, pushes back up. And now where are we at? We are, so it, all of a sudden, this is another place where it kind of like resist support that I didn't have marked off, but I guess I could have, sh I should have, would have, could have seen that this level may hold because it held right here. So it pushes up and then um, goes through support, through, through resistance, pushes up, tested it as resistance. Now it's back down here, testing it as support again. I think I may have messed up how I just worded that. Anyway, <laughs> it was a bit of a choppy day. It was not like a clearly defined trend. As you can see here on the daily, I mean, we're kind of getting into boring times right now. Um, yesterday was not a big movement day. Today, it just kind of came down. And I always try to look at the daily and try to think, what is the candle going to look like at the end of the day? And I, I did think that we were going to have a bigger red candle. Um, I guess we're going to have a similar candle like that, like a... Um, a hammer. I forget what the technical word is or name is, but yeah. So, I mean, I don't think it's going to flash flood back down to the lows. I feel like it's going to maybe even 
pick up. I mean, Fridays are usually lower volume and even Friday evenings and afternoons are even boring, more boring than Friday mornings. So I'm done for the day. You know, I'm just going to try and start next week with a fresh head and follow my rules. And that's pretty much it. Well, hopefully you're following your rules. Hit the thumbs up button if you got value from this video. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you on Monday's trading recap. Thanks again. See you later.